Father God, we thank you. Let our lives be a sanctuary before you. Let our lives bring you honor and bring you praise. So God, this morning, we thank you. We thank you for another opportunity to come in the midst of worship with all the uh, members of the House of Prayer, Christian Fellowship Church, and all those that are uh, sisters and brothers in Christ visiting with us today. We want to thank you for them. We thank you for them. We thank you for the blessing that they are. God, thank you for the walk. Thank you for their relationship with you. Thank you for a closer walk with you. God, thank you so much for drawing us into a deeper revelation and understanding of who you are. And for those that don't have that with you, would you give them that intimacy with you like never before? Some are weak today. Some are discouraged today. Some are disgruntled today. But would you please just bless them and strengthen them? Give them the strength they need to walk through these trials and tribulations that they're going through. Only you are going to be able to get them through that. Only you are going to be able to get them through the moments like this. For some right now, they're going through some very, very, very tough times. Some have lost their loved ones, and they need your comfort this morning. Who can comfort the way you can, God? Nobody can. So would you bring comfort to the hurting heart? They miss their loved ones. They want to call them, but they, they can't call them. They want to pick up the phone, but they know if they do, they're not going to pick up at the other end. So bring comfort to those hearts who are hurting this morning and give them hope where there may be no hope. And sometimes the hurt gets so big and it can be unbearable. But you said to cast all our cares on you because you care for us. So this morning we cast every situation, every circumstance, every trial, every tribulation, we cast it on you this morning. God, have your way in the midst of, of these prayer needs and these prayer requests. Some people have been praying for things for a long, long, long time. But God, your ears are not too short to hear. Your arms are not too short to touch. And you're just not, uh, not going to bless us. You are in the blessing place. And so we thank you for prayers that have gone up to you that seem to be unheard. You heard us the first time. So encourage your people, let them not get weary and well-doing. Let them not get weary as they're standing in you. Uh, we bind up that spirit of weariness. We send that back to the pit of hell and we lose peace over them, joy over them, strength over them. If they're standing for something, let their faith not fail them. Don't let their faith fail them, but renew their faith, renew their strength, renew their peace, renew their joy. So we thank you for renewed faith, renewed peace, renewed joy, renewed strength like never before. Every ear that's listening to this prayer right now, give them a touch from you. Strengthen them in every way that they need it. Give them hope where there's no hope. Give them joy where there's no joy. So we thank you for that this morning. God, we pray for unity within our country. We pray that you uh, bring everybody together. You know what it's going to take to do that. So we just ask for unity among brothers and sisters in Christ, black people, Chinese people, Japanese people, white people. Bring us every race, every creed, every color. Would you bring us together on one accord, unify us in every way, uh, allow the Christians to come together. We pray over our churches today, uh, those that are worshiping, that you will give these pastors a word that will impact those that hear it, that will cause change and unity and love and harmony to come in the body of Christ. Help the church to rise up and take our place and do what you called us to do. Now, Father, for that, we are truly grateful. We thank you. We bless you. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor Do your name. For it is in your precious son, Jesus' name, that we pray. We give thanks and honor to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank you, God. Glory to your Lord. Thank hallelujah. You, hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And I welcome you to the House of Prayer, Christian Fellowship Church. My Lord, it's just a blessing to be here. It's a blessing to wake up another morning. Yeah. My Lord, thank you. Father. Welcome, welcome, thank welcome you, this Lord. morning. My Lord, we're Good maximizing to have you. ministry and minimizing maintenance in the lives of the believer. We thank you, guests. We thank you, members. We thank you. 
I'm Pastor Michael Sofus. This is my wife, Pastor Lovely Sofus. And I want to thank all of you guys for joining in this morning. I believe God has an awesome word for you. Yeah. But it's up to, it's just, I was going to give it to say it's up to me to let you know, but I just want to let you know. It's not up to me. I just want to let you know that we serve a mighty God. We serve our yes. able God. Yes. And that God that we serve is in total control. Yes. And that should give us the peace that we need in our lives forever to know mm -hmm. that he's in control of everything. Yes, Amen. He is. And he will yes. deliver us. Yes, he will. You just got to know he's in total control. Amen. Amen. And guess what, y'all? We're here for such a time as this. Whatever's on the, in this atmosphere for, to battle, to war, to help, to, to lead, to guide, we are here for such a time as this. We're here for that. That's what we're here for. That's what God has got us here for. We built, we built for it. We strengthened for it. We prepared for it. We're, we're God's people. We're the Christians. And we're his people. Amen. Amen. And we're going to be holy because he's holy. Amen. He's a warrior. We're going to be a warrior as well. Glory to you, Lord. I want to welcome you to this time of worship through your giving. Amen. God wants to bless you through your giving. I want you to turn with me to uh, Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through, well, chapter 10, uh, the, chapter 3, verse 10, I'm sorry. And the word of God says, and I'd like to go here, and uh, sometimes, this, this is the beginning of my giving, and if this is probably the beginning of some of you, of your giving as well, this scripture right here, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. This is the only place in Scripture where God says to test me. And he says, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour you out so much blessings that you're not going to have enough room for it. He says, he's gonna, he's going to give you all you need when you need it. And he's going to give you more than you need. So there will not be a need. God saying, I'm going to give you everything. You just, I just need you to do this. He said, I just need you to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. I remember when I heard this scripture and I got explanation about it and the pastor was telling me it's the tenth, tenth of what you earn. And God wants you to bring that and whatever else he put on your heart, he wants you to give that. God wants to use you. He wants to get something to you and move something through you. And that's what God wants to do. Amen. He wants to give, He wants us to have that abundant life. He wants us to have that uh, 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 prosper, live in prosperity. And prosperity isn't always about money, Pastor. It's, it's good health. All right? It's a lot of other things besides money. Prosperity, man, it's, just, it's a good place to be with God, amen? And God wants to get you there. We at the house of prayer, we start off at a tenth, and then we move to where God wants us to move after that, because at the tenth, the windows of heaven are going to open, and he's going to pour you out so much blessing that you're not going to have enough room for it, amen? So let's live right there. Let's stay right there, amen? Let's stay right there at that tenth and give God the tenth. And when he put up, whatever else he put on your heart to give, just give that. God wants you to give your best so he can give you his best. His best. Amen. Amen. So let's bring our whole tithe and offering into the storehouse this morning. And I want you to join me with being obedient, generous, cheerful, and I want you to be willing to give your tithe and offering this morning. Amen. Yes. Now during this time of giving, and it's going to change pretty soon. So during this time right now, we're using Cash App. And we're using a dollar sign L-O-V-I-E 55. That's the Cash app. And for Dale, we're going to use 281-248-6961. Amen? Yes. While you're out there preparing your gift for giving, we, let's sit our hearts ready to pray and uh, ask God to, 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 to do what he says he's going to do because he's an able God. Amen? Come on. Come on. Y'all y'all, y'all, y'all with me and pray this morning. Okay? Bow your heads. Uh, this, Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Father. We praise you. We magnify you, Lord. We give you all honor, praise, and glory. Lord, all those that gave yesterday, that's given today, that's going to give tomorrow, Lord, bless their storehouses according to your word, Lord. Fill those storehouses to overflowing. We believe it. We know that you're going to move in that capacity, Heavenly Father. We're praying for everyone that's giving and gave and going to give, Lord, that their harvest field be as green as green can be, as far as the eye can see, full of prosperity and full of abundance. Father, we are praying for a debt-free church and a debt-free congregation. Father, you know the way. Show us the way, Heavenly Father, to debt freedom. We want to be there, Lord. Help us to be good stewards of everything that you give us, my Lord. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and we magnify you. You are a mighty God and a loving God. And we thank you for your unlimited love that you have uh, 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 put out and poured out on us, Lord, right now, Father. So, Lord, we just thank you and praise you and magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Glory to you, Lord. 
Well, it's time for the word of God this morning. Will we, can we bow our heads in prayer for the word? So, Father, we thank you for the word that's coming forth today. We ask that you um, just breathe on it, breathe new life into it. As we read the word, we pray that it will go forth unhindered, unchecked by any demonic force. In Jesus' name, we thank you that it will fall on fertile ground and produce a harvest of righteousness inside of every person that hears this morning. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Well, you know what? Uh, the title of our message today is Return to Your First Love. Amen. Return to Your First Love. Amen. Um, I was thinking about how dangerous it is to um, go through the motions of Christianity without a passionate love for Christ. It's just dangerous to do that. I mean, if, if we say who we, if we are who we say we are, if we really are Christians, we're not just going to go through the motions of being a Christian. Uh, the reason why it's dangerous, it kind of sets the wrong example for new Christians, and that could cause them to backslide, that could cause them to fall because they're watching you. We have to understand that as Christians that other people are watching us, and so if we're just going through the motions of, of being a Christian, it's not a good thing. It also teaches our children a distorted lesson on what it means to be a Christian, right? So if you're cussing, using a ton of profanity, acting a nut, going off. Uh, your children are watching you. It's funny because it's, it's almost like, do as I say, but not do as I do, right? But it should be do as I do, right? Do as I do. What, what, what I'm doing, you do that. We should be setting that type of example because if not, our children will end up falling are thinking this is the way Christianity should be. It also causes us to become uh, uh, complacent and less interested in God when we don't give God our best. Amen. What Jesus wants is for us to love him like um, he loves us. Um, we talk about the there's a, a love languages that people have. My love language is um, you don't have to give me a gift pretty much, but show me in, 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 in hugs and kisses and conversations, and that's what I like. Uh, but I believe that God's love language is intimacy with him. I, I believe that's his love language. He wants that intimacy. He wants that deeper relationship. So, you know, and so that's what he's looking for more than anything from us, coming together and talking to him all the time. I'm like that. So, he demonstrated his love for us on the cross. I think the best demonstration that could be given is what Jesus did on the cross, how he went to the cross for us. Because we have to understand that he didn't have to go. So he first loved us. The Bible says that God first loved us, right? That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth him in him shall have e eternal life. So he demonstrated that love to us where is our demonstration of love to him, right? Uh, Jesus has never lost his passion for us. Think about that. Did he lose passion for us? No. He still is very passionate and very loving toward us. His desire to be in relationship with us is as strong, strong today as it was when he made us. Now, Jesus loves us, and he wants us to return that love. That's what I'm trying to say. He wants us to return that type of love. We, uh, the church, are his bride. He loves us like a husband loves the wife of his youth. But how sad it is, uh, that love is not returned. Sometimes we don't return that love to him. Uh, today, I believe Jesus is telling us to remember from where we have fallen and return to our first love. I believe the church at Ephesus, and we're going to talk about that today, the church at Ephesus is a great example of what returning to uh, our first love really looks like. So, okay, let's go there. Revelations chapter 2, verses 2 through 7. We can go ahead and turn there. Again, that's Revelations chapter 2, verses 2 through 7. I'm going to read that. And it says, to the angel of the church in Ephesus write, these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden uh, lampstands. 
I know your deeds, your hard work, I know how hard you work, I know how you persevere, I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardship for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. Now they've done all of this, but God is saying I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Now consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things that you did at first. Now here's a warning. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your left stand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, to the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Now, I like what it says in verse 2. We're going to start right there. I know your works. Okay, so God is very aware. God is very conscious of the works that you're doing. Uh, your pastors may not notice it. Uh, those in ministry may not notice it or even acknowledge it, but God sees it. He knows the work we're doing in, in the king, in his kingdom. Uh, he's not surprised when you do something awesome in the church. Uh, your, your pastor may be surprised about that. Others may be surprised. But those gifts and abilities he put on the inside of you, and so he's cultivating those gifts that are in you. And, and he's not caught off guard by those gifts. He's not surprised. He sees the heart in which you work, whether you're working for good or working for bad. Some of us uh, don't work unto the Lord. Some people uh, uh, don't work well with others. They, they have a bad attitude. They're not working unto the Lord. And see, that's what God wants us to do. We've got to be careful of that. The good thing about our God is that he knows our works and that there is no problem and no condition that we face that he does not know or care about. If you are going through some trials, if you're going through uh, situations, and you may think that God doesn't care, God doesn't know, God doesn't understand, listen, we don't serve a God who cannot compromise. I mean, who doesn't understand? Jesus understood. That's why God sent his only begotten son for us. That's why he sent Jesus into the world so that by Jesus we would know what we need to do. We would know how to do it. We would know what to say. We would know how to respond. I mean, Jesus said the best example for how we need to live our life. So the good thing about him knowing our works is that there is no problem and no condition that we face that he does not know, that he does not care, or that he does not understand. So God knows and sees everything that is happening today in these churches. He's not caught off guard, like I said last week, about what's happening in the government. He's not caught off guard about what's happening in your home. He's not caught off guard about what's happening in your marriage. He's not caught off guard about what's happening with your children. God sees it, and he knows that. Sometimes we get off track, you know what I'm saying? But God never gets off track. Never. Let me say that again. He never gets off track. See, Pastor Mike, Jesus commended the Ephesians for what they did in the church. All the things that they did in church, they were commended just like you're commended for it. They were commended for that. Amen. Let's look at yeah. that again. Let's look at the church of Ephesus. And, and they was commended for these things. But I want to read, mm -hmm. read it again. Look at this. That's Revelation okay. chapter 2, verses 2 through 3. Okay. The, the, uh, the Lord is saying, I know your deeds, mm -hmm. your hard work, right. and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, mm -hmm. that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. Mm -hmm. You have persevered and have endured hardships by my name, for my name, and not grown weary, haven't got tired, haven't mm -hmm. given up. Mm -hmm. So, what would we what would be what would the church today be commended for okay uh, 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 putting together new membership classes uh teaching new believers uh teaching them the word of god and you know bringing the people into the church building the people up teaching the people and then sending the people out again evangelizing doing all the teaching they need to have to do the work of ministry that God wants them to do. Yeah. Sharing their faith, t telling people about the gospel, the people that you meet, 
How many times do we go out and we don't do that as well? But we should be doing it all the time. So that's what we're teaching. We're teaching that. In our church, the House of Prayer, we're teaching those things. Amen? We're working in with the children's ministry. We got people teaching the children about everything they need to know about God. Okay? So that's all. That's, 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 that's doing good stuff. Put together all kinds of committees that need to help the church work with the finances, the anniversaries, and all this kind of stuff. We're doing all that stuff to, to help the people grow, to bring people to uh, the, the capacity that God wants them to be in so they can do what God wants them to do in the time of need. What we're doing, we are bringing the people to the water, and it's up to you to take a drink. Amen. We, we give you encouragement to do all of that stuff. We've been patient. Whatever needs to be done to be patient about it, we're giving you patience. We have patience to do those things. Amen? Right. We hate evil just like the Ephesians church. Of this church, we hate evil. Mm-hmm. Okay, we don't, want, we don't want none of that in our church. We want to keep harmony, love, unity, and peace in our church. Uh, God has given us a, a, a talent to have the discernment to discern people. Uh, whether, what, you know, when people are coming in and do all sorts, of, all sorts of things that not according to God, God gives us the discernment to, to see and say, hey, wait, whoa, 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 we're not going to do that. Or, or push them in the right place or whatever. We're all doing it in love. Mm-hmm. All right? We're, we're persevering in the midst of all our trials and tribulations. And here's the thing. We're still going. We haven't grown tired. And when you get to that point of getting tired, Pastor, we always ask God to give us strength so we can keep on moving forward. Those are some of the things that all the churches around this nation, I say some of the things, that they are doing. And God sees everything that we're doing. We, everything we're doing, we're trying to bring him glory. If we get off the right path, we ask God to put us back on the right path in the teaching. Our whole goal is to teach you, teach you, teach you, feed you this word of God. Build you up. So when it's time to go out and, and tell people about Christ, you're encouraged, you're strengthened, and you can move the way God wants you to move. Now, as a church, uh, these are things we have been commu- co- you know, co- commended for today. Even today, we're being commended yeah. for that. God loves that because we, we're doing everything he's asking us to do right. to prepare the people. Yeah. Even though the Church of Ephesus had been commended for all these things, God still had something against them. Pastor. He, he did. And verse 4, he talks about that. In verse mm-hmm. 4, it says, Yet I hold this against you. You know what it was? It says, You have forsaken the, the love you had at first. They're doing all of this stuff, mm-hmm. but yet they've forsaken their first love. Yes. You know, Pastor Mike, we've been married now for about 33 years, and we have to work on loving each other. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're not careful, you can get too comfortable with your spouse. Mm-hmm. You can get so comfortable, and you can start taking them for granted. Right. It's the truth. You, you just take them for granted. It's kind of like, especially females, you know, we get all dolled up and dressed up, and we think we're looking kind of cute, and we're waiting on our husband to say, oh, baby, you look so beautiful, and they don't say it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? See, that's getting comfortable. Or you never uh, tell your husband what a good job he does. You never bring that encouragement. You never do the things that you did in the first relationship. Right. Now, when you first met one another, right. I mean, y'all were on the phone, he holding the phone, you holding the phone, y'all fall asleep on the phone, you waking up, whoa. You know, you, you're spending that time. You're doing everything you're supposed to do when the relationship starts. But as time goes on, if you're not careful, even in that relationship, you could leave your first love. And we're going to talk about that even more. But uh, let's look at what love is. Because in order to understand that, we need to look at that. So turn with me to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 7. Uh, while you're getting that, let me just say this. You know, sometimes... In the marriage, um, people are upset and get frustrated with each other, just sideboard. They get frustrated with each other, and uh, they're not showing that love. So I want to remind the marriages, just throw this out here. If you are not showing your, your spouse love, give them some love. Give them some time. Give them some attention. I just want to encourage the men and women of God, since God used that as an example for this message, I want to just encourage you to do that. You don't want to uh, not be loving toward one another. So if y'all are bickering and fighting, just throw that all away. You got time for that. Get it together. All right? All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 7. It says, um, this is what best describes what, uh, uh, what, what God is talking about when he's talking about this love. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, 
I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Mm -hmm. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to re remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. See, you can do all these works and do all this stuff, and which we're good at. Some of us can work, 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 work. But here's where the rubber meets the road, okay? It says, love is what? Patience. Do you have some patience? All right? Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. We're not loving God when we're insisting on our own way. It is not irritable with God. It is not resentful to God. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things, and it endures all things. See, we can have great programs, we can have awesome services, uh, we can have give great insights, I mean, give you the deepest things and tell you the deepest thing, uh, but if we don't have love for God and one another, we are nothing. Amen. What? Yeah, we are nothing. Uh, if you don't believe me, let's look at the scriptures, okay? The Bible says we're nothing if we're not doing that. In 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 2, let's go back there again. Let's look at that. It says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, which is love, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Then verse 2 says, and though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all the mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not love, what does it say? I am nothing. See, all of this is useless, okay? Since we know what love is, we have to look uh, to see and understand that we need to look at what is happening to cause us not to show this love to Christ the way he deserves. Okay, we need to look at that. So sometimes what happens to us, I believe, is sometimes we can become, get like I said, into a routine and a habit. You're coming to church out of, like, obligation, and you're not coming because you love God. So when I come to church, I'm excited. I'm getting myself together Saturday night for church Sunday morning. Okay? Even though you're doing virtual, you can get yourself together Saturday night for virtual church Sunday morning. It should not be an afterthought. We should not treat God like that because when we do things out of routine and habit, then uh, this type of service to God, uh -huh. that's not loving God, okay? Sometimes the vision of the church in our minds can become more important than our love for Jesus and our love for uh, other church members. We become more connected to the building, to the church, than we do to Jesus. So we gotta, we got to watch that, okay? Sometimes as, as you're working alongside other church members, this is a huge one, you can have a disagreement and decide you don't want to have anything to do with that person or God anymore. That disagreement that you had with someone else caused you to fall out of love with God. What does that have to do with God? That has nothing to do with God. That is an argument that the enemy allowed to happen between you and that person. Okay? So are you get upset with the pastor and then you don't want to love on God no more, don't want to worship God. You're mad at God because these things happen. That's wrong. That's not loving God. That's not the uh, God's fault. Whose fault is that? That is the enemy's fault. We serve a devil that's real. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But what does it say about our God? Our God came to give us life, and that life more abundantly. Or listen to this. Or you may work hard on a program and a project that you think was important. After a while, you may feel like you're not getting the kind of support or the, not the kind of uh, recognition that you feel you deserve. So slowly you become resentful toward the person and toward God, and slowly a barrier is built. You gotta be careful. You see how this stuff is progressive, that anything can, can interfere with your love walk with God? 
See, the question is now, we've talked about all this stuff, but the biggest thing we need to do is learn how to return to our first love. How do we get back? Because I know some of you uh, right now are feeling like disconnected from God. There's a disconnect. And I know we've got this pandemic going on, but it shouldn't be the disconnect. We should be connected. We should be cultivating that love. So the question, Pastor, is how do we return to our first love? How do we do that? Well, let's look at... Uh uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 5a. It's that first part of chapter of uh, that, that verse. Okay. All right. To, have, to help us answer this question a little bit here. Uh, 5a says, Consider how far you have fallen. Okay. Consider how far you have fallen. And then it says, Repent and do the things you did at first. We're going to look at how far we have fallen by doing three things. Okay. Three, these three things are going to help you out. We got to remember, mm -hmm. we got to repent, and we got to restart. Let me say those again. We got to remember, we got to repent, and we got to restart. Yeah. And we start by remembering and asking ourselves a few questions. Okay. Here's a couple of questions you need to ask yourself. Why did you come to Christ? And what excited you about being a Christian? Why did you come to Christ? Sit back and listen and then ponder on that for about a few seconds. And what excited you about being a Christian? Okay? Yeah. I, I, mean, I, I, I looked at that question. I said, what did, why did I come to Christ? Mm -hmm. Okay? Why did I come? Why did Pastor Mike come? See, we all have our own reasons, okay? And I saw things. I saw, one time I saw my life, it, uh, it came to a point where it wasn't going anywhere. I said, God, I need something more. Yeah. See, I knew yeah. of God. Yeah. Okay? But me and God were tight, hmm. okay? I just knew him from going to church when I was a kid, and I started to remember some things, okay? Yeah. I said I had to go back and do some things. I had to go back to the beginning. Sometimes you have to go back to simplicity. If you've been working on a, if you're a computer expert, and you're looking at uh, some instructions, and you're reading those instructions, and you're trying to get this certain thing to work, mm -hmm. sometimes you gotta go back to the beginning right. of your learning to, to find that simplicity of some things so you can move forward. Now, I'm sure, I'm sure some of you came to Christ because you saw how happy other Christians were and how at peace they seemed. I saw brothers that I've seen that were violent brothers. And when I saw them the next time, even their appearance has changed. Their, their, their habits have changed. The things they did was, they didn't fight no, they didn't want to fight no more. They weren't aggressive as they were. And even their face looked different. And I, my question was, what happened to that guy? You know, what, and then he tells me about the Lord, okay? Now, like I said, I was in that world, and I decided, I said, I gotta have, there's gotta be something more out there. Mm -hmm. And I remember somebody telling me, won't you try Jesus? And I'm like, how do you try Jesus? All right, I had all these questions. I was, uh, I had that curiosity that had come up, and, and I just needed something different. And when I found, when the Lord found me, and gave me something different, and gave me something that I never knew that existed, built me up, encouraged me, and did all that he did. We're gonna go take we're gonna go a little further than that later, but I, I just wanna tell you, that's where I was and in my life it was just going down the drain. And God pulled me up Thank you, and Lord. got me moving. Yeah. Okay. You know, some of you guys maybe maybe want a healing in your body and God gave you healing and you out of your gratitude you say, All right, I'm with, I'm, I'm, I'm on with Jesus. Yeah. Uh, we need to always remember that beautiful experience that first gave us our lives with Christ. Yeah. See, I'm not going to never forget that experience. Mm -hmm. Me either. I was excited. I couldn't wait yeah. to share. When I got saved, I couldn't wait to share and tell somebody about the Lord. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> In order to return to our first love, we have to remember what we did when we first gave our lives to Christ. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. when you remember, when something exciting happened to you, and you go back and you remember that thing. That thing is yeah. so exciting. You wanted it so bad. You yeah. See, sometimes we just got to go back and remember. See, I remember... One night I was at an event, and I saw a beautiful young lady walking down the aisle, and and, and she had on this red, white, and blue uh, uh, jumpsuit, and she had and, and it was red, white, and blue, and it had stars on it, and the stars were red, and I can remember remember her, those high heels she was wearing. I don't know if they were black or dark blue, but this beautiful image came down that aisle and took my heart away, and when that when 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 that person took my heart away. I changed. It mm -hmm. made me change my behavior. 
to how I looked at things because I, I wanted to be with that person. See, that's how Jesus came into my life. He walked in my life and touched me. And when he touched me, he touched my whole heart, my whole being. And when he touched me, I felt so secure. I felt safe. And my heart exploded. And I began to cry and tear up. And I knew something different had happened to me at that moment. See, I had to remember. See, I had to remember that time of that connection. Just I had, I had to remember that time and connection with that beautiful lady that, was walk, that, I, that walked up to me and she came into my life after several months after that. And I can remember when we had our first kiss. See, I can remember when I was in a situation and, and God took me in his arm and hugged me and kissed me on my cheek and said, don't, don't be fair to nothing. I got you. Yeah. See, you got to remember those things. See, and, and it makes you so excited you, and you remember that, hey, man, let me tell you about the God I met. And my friend saw that change in me, and I had to go back and say, Lord, mm -hmm. I think, let me tell them about you. I was excited to tell them about you. Yeah. Some of them didn't believe me. Some of them didn't want to do anything. I had to remember how, how to use prayer uh, 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 and, 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 and pray all times of day, and I had to go back to remember that. Sometimes we got to go back to remember. If you're in a spot right now, and you could be a pastor, a bishop, or whatever. Man, sometimes we got to sit back and we got to have a moment of, what is that? A moment of reality, a reality check. And when you go back and you say, wait a minute, Lord, I'm, I'm in a spot. And sometimes I, you got to go back and say, you know what? I remember praying. And, and sometimes you can remember the simple prayer. Now, it's a powerful prayer, our Father. Which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, that will be done. Just, to, just I call it a simple prayer because that's the first prayer I learned. Yeah, yeah. And after that, God advanced my prayer life. Yeah. Okay? I had to go back to that. Sometimes we got to go back to simplicity. Sometimes you just got to go back to remember mm -hmm. how you used to give everything to the Lord. We didn't got, got so far advanced past that. Oh, we doing this. We didn't gain pastors, and we running the church, and we got this program going on. We building people up over here. Our, ch our children's ministry is growing. We got people online joining the church, and we doing all this business, and we got to go back and remember that all of this is because God loved me. All of this because God gave me uh, whatever He gave me and prepared me for, and I'm here as a pastor now, and I can do all these things because God loved me the way he did, and why am I not loving God like he loved me? Mm -hmm. We got to go back to that first love. We got to go back to sharing the gospel. We got to go back to uh, uh, just hanging out with God and saying, God, I don't want nothing. Yeah. I just want to come talk to you. I want to just lay in your presence. I want to feel that security. I want to feel that love that you gave me. I want to remember that first kiss when you kissed me, Lord. Mm -hmm. I want to remember that first uh, that first hug when you hugged me. I remember yeah. uh, me and my, my wife uh, 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 was dating, and the first time I held her hand, we were just walking, and our hands hit, and then all of a sudden I grabbed her hand, she grabbed mine, and <laughs> I just felt so good, because I, you know, and I looked in her eyes, and I wanted to, and you know, while we were dating, I wanted to, I wanted to, I know I kissed her a thousand times before I kissed her once. And I'm just telling you, I'm just trying to tell you how that love is, and comparing it to the love how God loved me. And he can make you remember. Yeah. God can make you remember the first time he touched your hand and touched your life and gave you a hug and gave Ooh. you that security and gave you and made your heart explode. My yeah. God. Okay. And you remember all the stuff you went through and how God was with you every step of the way, even when you didn't love him back like you should. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, today is time to return to your first love. Today is time to... Uh, uh, give that uh, reciprocate, what it was called, reciprocate. reciprocate that love. Grab hold to God's hand. Grab hold to and hug Him and kiss Him and, and live in that security. Yeah. You got to remember how you used to give everything to God and you mm -hmm. worshipped Him. You just worshipped Him. It, it, it wasn't no time of day. Mm -hmm. You just, you just one day you could be driving and say, "Oh my God, I love you, Lord." Mm -hmm. Go back to that. We got to go back to our first love. You got to go back to enjoying, enjoying coming to church or yeah. coming to church on Zoom. Yeah. You know, I, I used to go to church. I used to love just coming to church and being with my friends because, you know what, everybody in the church was my friend. Right. They, you know, I didn't care. I just want to be at church. When church, when church, when it's time for church, I want to be there and talk to people, love on yeah. people, people me loving too. on me. And that's the spirit of God just loving on each other. That's the kind of church I want at the, at the House of Prayer Christian Fellowship Church. That's why I'm already coming. I, I, I put you guys on duty to uh, I always have that love. Love one another. Keep that. Keep the devil out of our stuff. 
Keep that gossiping out. Everything that uh, about the devil, keep it out of our church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember enjoying those days of church. I want, and I like that about our church right now. I want to keep on enjoying coming to church. I want to keep on coming to church, even seeing you on Zoom. When we used to come and meet, I want to come and touch you, hug you, give you a high five, joke around with you a little bit. All right? But we got to get back to our first love. Remember the joy of getting together with our with other Christians. We got to remember that. Remember, remember the excitement of having that faith, fighting that good faith. You know, I'm, I get excited now when, when God showed me something in the Word. I'm excited about coming to share it with you. Yeah. But this, when this message was prepared, I read, I said, you know what? This is a good message. Because somebody needs to re remember, even myself, I need to remember how to go back and say, Lord, I'm with you. Wherever you go, I'm going with you. Lord, I love you. I, I, I wouldn't tell God I loved him until I was sure I loved him. I wouldn't even say it. I wouldn't even think it. I said, Lord, I'm not going to say it or think it until I'm sure that I love you. Because I don't want to lie to you. Because you already know my heart. And I want to be truthful with you. So now I can say, Lord, I love you. Because I can look back at my life and he can show me. How, how he loved me with so much love, and, and with the simplest things, he still loved me. Right. When the things I was doing wrong, he still loved me, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Even in the midst of all the stuff that I was going through, even the consequences he put me in, he was with me in those consequences, mm -hmm. holding my hand, giving me love, putting his arm around me, looking straight in my eyes, yeah. and saying, Mike, I love you. Thank you. I mean, I'm going to tell you, when you can see that, when you can see God, when you can feel God holding your hand, touching your heart, and you can look in God's eyes, and you can see that. And you can see that love. See, when my first love, when I, I looked in my wife's eyes, she, her eyes told me, she didn't have to say nothing. She just told me, hey, I love you. Yeah. And that's how God looks at us. When we can look in God, God's eyes, and I say, and I know you out there thinking, oh, how are you going to look in God's eyes? Let me tell you. You can see the Lord. Lord moves in, 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 in all around in you. Yes. And, and touch you and hold you and kiss yes. you and, and pamper you and, and, and lift you up when things are down. Mm -hmm. He's right there with you. Yes. His whole being is right there with you. I just want to put that out there. we got to remember those remember. things so we can go back to our first love. Mm -hmm. This is how we return to our first love by remembering the things we used to do mm -hmm. and begin to do them again. Mm -hmm. Do them again. Go back. Mm -hmm. If you remember, you should repent for not doing what you did before. Yeah. Go back and say, Lord, forgive me for not doing the things I did before. We were, we were closer. We want to get back closer to the Lord. Glory to the Lord. Thank yeah. you. When you, um, and it's important that we, as a body of Christ, I believe that's the, what the Lord is speaking to the church now. Yes. Uh, at this hour, is that we need to return to our first love. Yes. And like Pastor said, you got to remember from where you failed. Yes. Remember uh, what you used to do, the things that you know you used to do. And for each person, it's going to be different. different. Right, amen. What Pastor's doing may be different from what I need to do. But whatever that is, you got to remember what you used to do, and then because you have not been doing the things that you know you should be doing, mm -hmm. it's time to repent for those Amen. things. Amen. Now, what does it mean to repent? See, you can tell me you're sorry all day, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but then you go back and do the same thing again. That's not repentance. True repentance means that not only are you going to tell me you're sorry, but you're going to turn away from whatever that thing is, I mean literally about face, Turn away from it, and you're not going to ever do that again. Amen. That's true repentance. Yes. Now, if you do fall short, it won't be premeditated. It won't be something mm -hmm. that you intentionally right. done. Right. It'll be that the enemy trapped you and you fail. That's different. Yes. Yes. But true repentance is more than just telling God, I'm sorry. When you know the next five minutes, you're going to go back and do the same thing. Yes. So we want to make sure that we understand that that is what true repentance is. So when we ask God to forgive us, uh, to forgive you if you have had a bad attitude about anything, he's going to forgive you. But understand that it's kind of like a parent. If you continue to do the same thing over and over and over again, what does a parent do? They give you a little grace. They don't spank your behind. You come again, you do it again. They give you a little, sometimes more grace. Yes. They don't spank yes. your behind. That third time you come and you're doing all that, you're going to get a spanking. 
The more we stay out of the will of God, the more we experience the wrath of God. I want to put that out there because we need to understand we can't stay there. You can't stay out in the world. You can't stay and do what you're doing. The Bible says that you were marked until the day of redemption. You have a mark on you. You have been marked for the kingdom of God. And you can't stay out there. We can't do what everybody else is doing. We just can't do that because that's not who we are. We've been set apart for God's good use. And so... If we've not been doing what we need to do, as you remember those things that you should have been doing, those are the things right now that we have to go to God and say, God, I am sorry that I missed Amen. that. Amen. Because Amen. you know what? Sin is missing the mark. This is what we're supposed to do. God said do this. We do something else. That's sin. So we have to make sure that when we do remember these things that you were telling us that we were supposed to remember in order to return to our first love, that we say, God, forgive me because I have not uh, gotten in this word the way you yes, told me to. Yes, yes. I have not been in worship the way you told me to. Some of us were on this fast and, and, and fasting and praying go together. You can't fast without praying. And so we I haven't been praying. You know, that's one thing. God, forgive me for not praying like, amen, like I amen, should. Amen. And for some of you, y'all used to pray, I mean, all the time. Used to get in the Word all the time. What cut in on you? What got in the way of all of this? You know, so we it's our responsibility to get back that, to that. We have to examine our motives. If we have not been serving God out of love but out of duty, repent. Repent for not doing the things of the church because you love God, but you did it out of routine. Repent for allowing people to sin in your presence and not bring correction to that in love. You know, it's important today that we all get back to that place. That was the one thing that, that God had against the church of Ephesus. They did not, they did all this stuff, but yet they weren't loving God like that. And we know what love is. We talked about that in 1 Corinthians. So we have to remember, we got to repent. We're talking about how to return to our first love. We're telling you how to do that, yes. how to get back to that place. Yes. Because I believe this is what God is speaking to our church. Yes. If you're visiting today, God is speaking that to you. Yes. We got to remember where we fell from in this relationship with God. And we have to repent. And the next thing, after we repent and we get all that off of us, we give it to God. Because yes. God's not trying to beat you over the head. Right. He's not trying to make you feel bad about it. No, God wants that intimacy with us. Right. The next thing you got to do is restart. That's you right. got to restart. We got to start over. And start over. We yeah. got to start over and start anew. It's, it's okay to do that. And we got to do that by making God a number one priority. God is the number one priority in our lives as Christians. Yeah. We're trying yes, he to is. imitate Christ in all that we do. Yeah. We're trying to be exactly like Christ. When that person look at you, they want you want that person to see Christ. Yeah. Okay? After we remember, and then we repent. See, mm -hmm. because when we remember, it puts us in a state of mind. Then we repent. Yeah. God forgives us for everything we do. Oh, yes, but then yes, we yes. turn away from what that thing, like you said, to get yeah. about faith and yeah. turn. Now, after we do all that, now we got to start over. We can't, we can't, start over. We can't go back to where we first, where we left off. No. That's the bad place. No. Let's get to a place that we can We're start over. Now. And God will let you do that. You got to yeah. think about how wonderful it used to be serving God and how to start allowing yourself to get excited about uh, serving God again. You know, yes. I, I always tell you guys, hey, man, when you come to church, come with an expectancy. Mm -hmm. Come That's expecting good. God to move in a mighty way. Come yeah. expecting God to move for the person sitting next to you. Yes. Uh, to move in their yeah. life in a mighty way. Mm -hmm. For God to change them as well as yourself. You, that's yeah. the expectation. You come and expect, even when you come on Zoom, I'm, gonna say, I'm expecting the, the Facebook or Zoom. You're mm -hmm. coming to well, I'm going to see what God got for us today. Not what Pastor Michael, Pastor Lovey got, but I'm going to see what God got for us today. Because yeah. God is leading us to tell you. That's mm -hmm. what he's doing. All this stuff is from God. We just, we just been vessels. Mm -hmm. like, we pray all, if we, before we give this word, we say, Lord, we pray that we decrease while you increase. Yes. And let those who have ears, let them, be, let them hear your word and listen to your word. And not only hear it and listen, let them be doers of your word. Yes. See, that's that restart. Let's do it. Let's, let's start over. Sometimes it's good to just start over. It is good. Take your time mm -hmm. and get back on track with God. God wants you to get back on track with him. Let's get back on track with him. Get, let's start getting excited about coming to church, like I said, on mm -hmm. Zoom. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about praying. See, we're fasting right now. I'm excited about this fast because 
I'm asking God to do something for this congregation, to give us a hunger and a thirst beyond our imagination. Yeah. And Lord, to move in their lives like they've yes. never seen you move before. Yes. And I want everybody trying. See, here's the whole key of, even when we go out to evangelize pastor, mm -hmm. the whole key is not that everybody we talk to gets saved. Right. The number one important thing in evangelism is to evangelize, right. is to share the gospel. That's mm -hmm. it. That's your, yeah. that's your, that's your victory. Mm -hmm. If you share with one person, mm -hmm. that's victory. Yes. Okay? Because it's up to God. The Bible says, Paul said, I plan Apollos one, but come it's on God now. that gives come the increase. On come on you don't now. save nobody, it's God that saves. Come on now, all we're doing mm -hmm. is leading you to the water. Mm -hmm. uh, it's up to you to take that cup and drink it. That's it. Or bend down on your knees and drink it. Or lap it up like a dog and drink it. But as long as you take some of the water, yeah. my Lord, and that's it. Yeah. That's what that's the goal of our evangelism. And that's what we I tell, we tell everybody before they go out. Hey, just go out and share the gospel. That's the courage. That's doing the what God wants you to do. See, we got to be in that place where reading God's word, letting that word uh, 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 fill you up, yeah. give you instruction, give you courage, take away the fear, and just do what it says do. Yeah. That's it. And when the Holy Spirit tells you to do something, it's the game is on. It's about 10 seconds left. The game is tied. They're getting ready to kick a field goal. God say, turn your TV off and start praying. And yeah. when you're able to do that, mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's putting God first. That's loving him. That's loving God. That's, that's starting God over. First. That's, for all those, that's, for, that's for all you, you guys that like yeah. basketball or, or football, any kind of sports. If God can tell you to stop right there and you begin to, and tell you to pray and you pray, mm -hmm. see, that's a, that's, a, that's a whole new level in your life that you just went through. Right there. Yeah. And whatever you love doing, you know, and, and you're in the midst of doing that, and God say, hold on, stop. Come on, pray. And you stop that thing and you just pray, that means you're giving yourself over to God. You're a willing vessel. We want to be willing vessels. Pastor, I know people, some people, we're talking about restarting. Some mm -hmm. people used to do that. Absolutely. Uh, had a prayer closet that they were going to used to do that. Absolutely. But what happens is we stop doing it. We got to start off. We got to do what we did before. And we let life come in yeah. and make that interjection. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. We got kids come in and make the interjection. Sure, Hold on, yes, let me get these kids to sleep. Come on, So now. I can get back come in my on. prayer closet come and me on. and God can talk. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. I hate our, I hate our, uh, uh, my prayer closet is full of clothes <laughs> and stuff and shoes. But you know what? Just, just, just right now, this very second, yeah. Holy Spirit say, see that little spot right there? You can just move that to the side, close your door and get in your prayer closet like you're used to. Yeah. See, I had a prayer closet, Pastor. Yeah. And I lived in that prayer closet, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And then when I come out of that, I probably say, man, you've been in there a couple of hours. I think, nah, I feel like I've just been in there five minutes, ten minutes. You know, you've been in there That's about it. an hour. Yeah. Because me and God having a good time. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I like having that good time with God. I like going to God and not asking him for nothing. Lord, I just want to be here with you. Talk to me. Mm -hmm. What do you got to say? I, you, you know, all my life I can tell you to you again, and I'm just waiting on you to say something. Yeah. Get back to that. Get back. Go, go back. Go back to there and, and, and be with God, just you and God, just hanging out. Mm -hmm. Go take a drive and just you and God, just drive and talk. Mm -hmm. Sit down by the water. I like to, I like to sit down by the water and just sit we, there we and, say God, and say, God, <laughs> and say, God, love to sit by the water. talk to me. Talk to me, Lord. I, I, sometimes God give me messages. I'm sitting by the water. I'm fishing. I'm sitting by the water. And when there ain't no fish biting, I'm, me and God talk. He give me a message. He gets, I take my phone out and put it down there and say sermons. I got my phone right now. I got a little list of sermons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I need you to just trust God. I need you to trust yourself. Renew your loyalty, your loyalty and your commitment to him. Mm -hmm. By rededicating your life to Christ. You can rededicate your life to Christ. Yeah. Just you and him. Tell God you want another chance to start over and to get right. I want to say something about that, renewing your loyalty. Renew your loyalty and your commitment. Mm -hmm. Some of you, when you started out, you were coming to prayer on Mondays. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You were uh, you were coming to church on Sundays. You were doing everything. I mean, and that's just not that, but I'm just saying, when you stop doing that, when you back down, yeah. then the world starts to pull you back out. you got to turn your back on the world. See, in order to restart something, you got to stop That's something, right. don't you? That's right. That's right. So you need to around. stop. Mm -hmm. Just Every stop. Time. Just take a moment. Mm -hmm. Sit back. Stop what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Stop. And remember, mm -hmm. repent, 
and then start over. You gotta stop though in order to do it. Right. You can't. Can, yeah, right. yeah. You gotta stop to restart. Mm -hmm. You know, right. when a car, if you're moving in a car, you gotta stop the car. You can't start the car until the car stops. So stop what you're doing, mm -hmm. and then restart. Start over. Make a decision, and I, I believe it's more of a decision that we have to make that Amen. we're going to do. Amen. I was talking to. Um, Yaki earlier, and she did not even know that this was the message, right? Mm -hmm. And she was talking about leaving her first love, how she used to. She was like, now, now I'm praying to God all the time, but I'm talking about that quality time, right? Like, and I know exactly what she's talking yeah. about because yeah. my, that quality time gets pushed. And so many things can get in the way of that. And so she said, I'm getting ready to do this, 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 this. And I'm getting ready to do this, 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 this. She's starting over. Yeah, yeah. And I love that. I was like, you had no idea that this is the message that we're going to be talking about to y'all today. That we have left our first love. And it's just not fair, Pastor, that we treat God the way we treat God. You're talking about a master, a savior, the creator of the world, the one who made us. You know what I'm saying? Fashioned us, formed us, called us on purpose, sent us down here to live for him. We, he made us. We didn't make him. He made us. But yet, the, he's loving us. He's blessing us. We're praying. He's moving things and doing things and doing all this. And all he's saying is, can you just love me? And I could just imagine, because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit can be grieved by yes. what we do. Okay, and that's the third person of God, right? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. How do you think it makes God feel when we don't love him that way? And so I, I too, was convicted by the word. <laughs> I said, I have to do more for God. I need to make sure I'm spending the necessary amount of time with him. I know that's his love language. Mm -hmm. I know he's wooing, you read in the uh, Psalms and he's calling us, wooing us, come to me, come and drink, come and eat, you know, there's an open invitation for us to come into his presence, but a lot of us aren't choosing to come to God, right? So, so we want to make sure that we remember from when we fail. And I'm, I'm, I'm pleading with the, 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 the person or people out there that has forgotten who they are in God that have gotten off course, the world means more to you than God. Think about that. You have a choice to make today, and that choice is I hope that you choose to serve God in the fullness of who you are. Amen. You know, and forsake all of that stuff. That stuff, me and Pastor, you know, we're older now. Uh, we're not old though, baby. But we're getting older, and through life we've learned a lot about life. When you think about, even for the young people, the teenagers out here, are the ones that are in college, you think them clubs and being around your friend, getting drunk and doing all this stuff, that's you're wasting time. I'm telling you, don't waste no time with that. You store up for yourself treasures that are in heaven. When you spend time in God's presence, when you worship, when you praise, right. when you fast, you're, you're getting you're close treasure. to Christ. And guess what you're doing? Storing up for yourself treasures that are in heaven. In the world, when you waste your time doing all those things in the world, that's wasted time. It's not worth it. Trust me, it's not. So we want to make sure we get back to just thinking about it. Today, when y'all leave here, make sure you start remembering what 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 God did for you. Uh, start doing that. Amen. Glory to the Lord. Hey, let me say this before we conclude. If you're out there. Oh, I, I didn't finish. I wanted to say this. I okay, had two more. Finish. I'm yeah. sorry. I had, in conclusion, I did have two more points. Sorry, Pastor. Okay. Uh, I want to just, because I wrote this down, I'm going to read it because I want you to get it. If we don't do this, uh, it says, this is what the word says, uh, God will come to you quickly and will remove your candlestick out of its place. The candlestick was symbolic of the Lord's presence. Listen to this. And his recognition of that congregation as belonging to him. Okay, so that presence, not that he's going, you, not that you're going to die and go to hell, but you know how you used to experience God in that deeper way? That's what happens. So we want to make sure that we, this is serious, y'all, make sure that we put, keep ourselves positioned in God's presence, okay? And then second, Jesus makes a promise in verse 7. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. To everyone who conquers, listen to this. 
I will give permission to eat from the tree of life that is in the paradise of God. When you get to heaven, you'll be able to eat from the tree of life. So we want to make sure that we understand that not only will God bless us in the earth, but you have a promise waiting for you in heaven if you return to your first love. You will be able to eat from the tree of life that's in the paradise of God. Amen. And for all the overcomers, he said, the, the overcomers, the one who has victory, we're the mm -hmm. overcomers. Yes. We want to be the overcomers. We want to be the ones that have stepped off the path yes. and then got back on the path and then got right with God while we're on that path. Yes. And he continues to love us and direct our path. You know, sometimes we go back to remember, uh, the Holy Spirit could make you go back to remember some things where you were. And that's when, I'm sorry, I got emotional right back then, but oh, you don't have God makes you remember where he brought you from. My Lord, that's just an awesome, that's just an awesome thing to know that God loved me so much that while I wasn't going to church, or even thinking about church, mm -hmm. he put me in church. He had got, he, he aroused my curiosity to get to know him better. Yeah. And then as I get to know him better, then I fell in love with him, mm -hmm. okay? And then That's out, what out of doing all the stuff, you think you're doing all this and doing all that, you say you're doing good, and then you, you, you the Holy Spirit reminds you, hey, you, 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 now you're taking me for granted. Now you're yes. taking me for granted. Yes. Okay, now you, yes. now you know better than that. The Holy Spirit is grieved. He, he yes. talks about all those things. Yes. And, it, and then it, that's when it's time to repent and ask God, forgive me, Lord, for I don't want to upset you. Yes. I don't want to make you angry. I don't want to do nothing that's that. And he forgives that's us. Not, and he, and he, mm -hmm. He's so loving. He forgives us. He's so loving. First John tells us, First yes. John 1 and 9 tells us, hey, if you've got to repent, ask him, repent, ask yes. for forgiveness. And God is, is a just God. Yes, he he wants to put you back on path and he's going to continue he's to gonna lead you and guide you. So I'm telling you, y'all, if you're out there, yes. get back to your first love. Get, get back, back to doing what you come used on, to do when you first started. Come on. Okay? Out there, if you're out there, and if you have decided today to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, today is a good day. It's a great day. It's a great day to ask the Lord to come to invite Jesus into your heart, into your life, to let him take control. It's, you know, change your gray sky to blue, give you sunshine when it's raining. He want to he wanna make you happy all the time. A person in, a person in charge of your life want to make you happy all the time and preparing you to stand on your own two feet. That's what God is. That's our Lord. That's our Savior. And if you want to make him your Lord and Savior today, just repeat after me. Amen. Amen. Now let's pray that. Let's say, Dear Jesus, forgive me for all my sins. Forgive me for all my sins. I want to declare today I want to and proclaim today, today that Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. Jesus, Jesus. I believe I you died for my sins, for and my I believe sins. the Father raised you from the dead. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I believe you said that prayer, that you're saved, because here's what the Word says. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's why I believe it because the word has said it. And if you confess it and you believe it, you are saved today. I want you to go and tell three people that you, you gave your life to Christ. And the Holy Spirit now resides inside of you. Tell them. And if you're looking for a church home, I'm going to uh, instruct you to an awesome church, an awesome prayer for you, for the church. We'd love to have you. If you're in Chicago or New York or California, it doesn't matter. You can even be one of our online members. And just message me on Pastor Lovey and let us know that you want to become a member of this great church. This great church. This awesome church. Yes. This God fearing church. This Bible teaching church. Yes. Amen. And we're going to love on you when things are good, when things are bad. We're going to pray with you. We're yes. going to stand with you. We're going to teach you this word of God because it's our, it's our job, it's our duty to do so. We're going to teach you this word of God to help you stand on your own two feet. Amen. And that's what the Holy Spirit's going to build you up place where you can stand on your own and you can do work for ministry. Amen.
Pastor Willis, is it okay with other people to rededicate their lives? Because there may be yes, somebody that, that wants that. to de Might rededicate those. And, and even, even the help that's here that helps us on Sunday, right. that volunteer, y'all do. Mm -hmm. And so if you um, feel the need right now, you can do that in your home. You don't have to be in the church. We are the church. Amen. People say the church is shut down. No, it's not. That's a building that's I'm shut I'm down. I'm the church Stay never that. shut Stay down. That. We're, we are the church. Yes. So you can uh, rededicate your life right where you are in your living room. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, re if you're in your bedroom, I don't know where you are, but wherever you are in your house, you can rededicate your life to Christ now. So what, people, what does that, go ahead, man. There's so many people out there want to rededicate their life right now. I believe that. So I believe that. that. And so if you um, know that oh, this Lord, message you, touched your heart yes. about returning to your first love, and you know that if you have not uh, done all you're supposed to do by loving God, it's time to rededicate your life. Rededication means that you're going to rededicate your worship, rededicate your prayer. It doesn't mean that you just left God. That means that you're saying, I haven't been loving him the way I should, so I want to start doing that. And so if that's you, uh, you can kneel right where you can stand, you can kneel, but let's rededicate our life to Christ, okay? So let's do that. So uh, repeat after me, Father, forgive me for not doing the things that I started off doing. And I need your help to come out of the world. I need your help to pray more, to get in your word more. Even if this fast has been hard for me. So thank you so much for being my Lord and Savior. And today, I want to rededicate my life to you. I acknowledge that you are my Lord and Savior. You're the love of my life. I want to start loving you the way I should. And I thank you as of today. You've given me wisdom and insight on what I need to do to start loving you more, to return back to you. So today, I return back to you wholeheartedly. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to the Lord. Rededication and salvation. Thank you. And I'm praying that you can give us a, a, a message and let us know that you rededicated and yeah, gave your life to Christ and uh, that you become, just you become a member of our congregation. Yes. Last week, this is our last week, y'all, of our fast. Oh, yes. Our last week. Mm -hmm. We want to finish strong, okay? We're eating only vegetables, fruits and vegetables and legumes. That's all beans and peanuts. That's all we're eating, y'all. Nothing else. That's it. Now, we're drinking only water, okay? Some of you guys out there are going Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday with water only. I am praying for you. If that's what mm -hmm. you're doing, that's okay. You already know if you get headaches or any kind of things going on, that you, man, put some food in your gut and continue, start over and continue <laughs> going. The success is, 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 is making an attempt to right. do it right. and do it to the best of your ability. Right. And you have some members that are doing it just straight like we're saying, we can pass. And you got some beginners that's trying, that's okay too. Don't overdo it. Don't uh, be on this three-day fast with no eating and try to go run the mile. Okay, okay, and start doing some extra work, working work on the car and all that kind of stuff. No, don't do that, man. Do, do nothing if you can. Yeah. Okay, do nothing if you can. Do less Spend than some time in prayer. Can. Spend some I was just, going, I was just getting ready to go. <laughs> Spend some time in prayer for God to take them hunger pains away, to strengthen you up, and he'll do that for you, okay? Yeah. This is our last week. We're going to finish strong. And on Sunday, after 10 o'clock service, the fast will be over. Okay, then you can eat anything you want to eat. I just pray that you don't go out there and try to get a steak and all that kind of stuff, eat some yeah. soup and stuff like that. I'm going to remind you next as Sunday time as time goes on. Okay, yeah. You can still join us for the last week of our fast, y'all. If you haven't joined us yet, you can join us this week. We invite you to join us and allow God to bless you beyond your imagination. Yeah. If you're a guest, we have, you know what, we got guests even fasting with us. Praise yeah. God. Thank you, guests, for fasting with this congregation. Thank you. Glory to you. We just thank you. And uh, we got, let me get some announcements out on Monday, Monday prayer on Facebook at 745. Pastor Lovey leading that, uh, we'll be praying mm -hmm. on Facebook on Monday night. Mm -hmm. Thursday is Bible study uh, for 7 p.m. Uh, on Zoom. And I'm, I'm, 
I'm thinking we got the password and the code up on the thing, or maybe not. Uh, but they can, can just message yeah, us. Yeah, but you can message us. We can give you that information. And it's in Friday prayer, 7 p.m. on Zoom. You can call. You can uh, message us for that information as well. We can get that information to you, okay? Come on, guys. Join us on Thursday night. Come on, guys. Come on, prayer. Come on. Pray on Friday. Uh, this is awesome. It's just awesome, okay? Um, let's go to our benediction scripture as we get ready to leave. And uh, It's at Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 through 18. I want to put this back out there. The, the word says, when you fast, do not look sober as the hypocrites do, mm -hmm. for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put on your, put on all, put all on your head and wash your face. I mean, look decent, okay? Yeah. Don't look like you're trying to fast all bent over and telling folks, I'm just so hungry. Why are you hungry? You know, well, you know, I'm fasting. And, you know, they, they, they want to have that pity thing going. Don't do that. That's how the hypocrites do. And God said, that's your own reward right there. And the first 18 says, so that, they, you know, you do that so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. That's where you get your reward. You, you're doing it in secret. You don't have to let everybody know you're fasting. Just go ahead and do it. And do your best at it, okay? Yeah. Amen. Come on, guys. Let's come on and pray and as we close. Dear Lord, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your presence. We thank you for touching those uh, out there. Uh, Lord, we ask you that they uh, begin to remember, repent, and restore. Go back to their first love. Lead them there, Lord. Give them courage to do it. Father, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, guys. Amen. Repeat after me. No prayer. No prayer. No power. No power. Little prayer. Little prayer. Little power. Little power. Much prayer. Much prayer. Much power. Much power. Glory to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, y'all. Come back with us at uh, 10 o'clock next Sunday. I believe God's going to have an awesome word for you. Amen. And uh, I, I want to say I love you. We love you. Thank you so much you. for worshiping with us today. And we we'll want see you to stay you next safe, time. okay? Yes. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Love you. Bye-bye.